You're listening to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community with your host, Ben Wolf. And welcome to the Win Win Podcast. This is Ben Wolf, as always, your host. I ask everybody to uh, pause for a second here, subscribe, leave a review, and uh, you know, make this more accessible to more people. Uh, and with that, I uh, will share with you that our topic today is it's a good one. It's a back to basics topic. It's back to management basics. And our, our guest today is a certified EOS, that's Entrepreneurial Operating System Implementer in Massachusetts, been practicing in that role for over 11 years. She has over two decades of sales leadership experience before that. Uh, with that, I give you Kirsten Smith. I got the, I said it right. You got it. You got it. Kirsten <laughs> Smith. And you can learn more about Kirsten at eosworldwide.com forward slash Kirsten Smith, K I R S T E N dash Smith uh, or hyphen Smith, depending on what language you speak. And uh, that's how you could find out more about her. And welcome, Kirsten. Thanks. And as long as you spell it right, you can say it wrong and it's completely fine. <laughs> I've spent my whole life getting called all the other things besides Kirsten. Right. And I always say, Kristen, I'm sure people say yes. Kristen. And I try not to use examples because then people forget and they're like, oh, Kristen or Kirsten. So now Ben, when you screw it up in the next, you know, 30 minutes or so, it's all good. Cause here's always my, my response. Right, we started off. You know, if you just say like, yo lady with the face, it's good. It's fine. I don't know. Yo lady. <laughs> I forgot that there, there's a word for that. Like when you hear a word, so many times that it loses yeah. meaning and you forget what it's even just ravage everyday words, what they're supposed to sound like. Yeah. You know what that's called? There's a name no. for that. No, or it's like, but it sounds weird in your head. You yeah. Even like word like leadership, like, you just, is it? Yeah. Le 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 <laughs> I forget what it's called. You know, somebody hopefully comment. If you listen to this comment on LinkedIn, comment somewhere. Get us if straight. You, you remember what that's called, but, uh, but, but essentially, yeah. So there's back to basics concepts. So yeah. if you don't mind, please share, give us a little context, two minute quick background in terms of like where you came from, how, you know, uh, how we got here and, and specifically even, even talking about this topic. Oh, love it. Okay. So quick background. Um, I was born in, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we won't go that far back. I started my career. You see uh, Goonies, the movie yeah, Goonies yeah. from the Listen, 80s? I am old enough to see Goonies, love Goonies. I am a fan. You know the scene I'm thinking of. What's the scene you're thinking of? <laughs> Remember that kid, Chunk, or whatever they called him? Yes. Where he was kidnapped by those people, yeah. and they threatened yes. to put his hand in the blender? Yes. And, and he's like, tell us everything you know. Start from the beginning. <laughs> now I got to go watch Goonies again. <laughs> he's just crying. I was born and... And, I swear. and my mom used to make fun listen, of me when I listen, was in first Goonies grade. Goonies should be a prerequisite for deciding if we're friends or not, right? Like, yeah. it says so much. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the shorter story than Chunk uh, is, uh, so I start my career, right? I'm, I'm, first of all, a big part of this, I always say started my career in the family business. And I did, but I'm going to start just a hair before that, because in all honesty, especially on this topic today, of um, sort of leadership management, holding people accountable. I was a mom because I got some of my best experience raising kids in, in all reality. So okay. I jump into the work world after having three kids. They were still pretty young and at home. And I and I jumped back into the work world and um, spent my first like decade in the family business. And I realized two really important things. Number one, loved helping people get better at what they did. And number two, running a business is hard, <laughs> freaking hard. Yeah. Uh, so hard that when the IT bubble burst, we were in IT, we went out of business after about nine years. Um, that kind of kicked off my management experience. I was in a management leadership team role in that organization. Mm -hmm. So from there, I transition into a very different situation, right? The next decade, I'm one of six directors running a multi-million dollar organization dripping with success. Five and a half million dollars in revenue to eighteen million dollars in my tenure there, which is great. Um, I am overseeing. I'm a director overseeing all of business development in North America. So back again is that experience, right? Being a mom is that was my epiphany then. Like, oh, 
my experience leading my family, leading my children is actually the same experience I need to lead these people. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was great. So anyway, um, spent about a decade there, loved it, loved my team there a ton, had so much success. Actually, you know what, Ben, sitting right in front of me, total rabbit trail, um, are some things that those people said about me when I was leaving. Really mm. amazing emails. I found it recently and pulled it out and thought, how inspirational is that? about how much they loved working on my team. Uh, anyway, lots of success there, uh, but went to what I loved, which is training and consulting, right? Helping people get better at what they do. And I have a business called Made to Thrive because from my gut, I really believe people were made to thrive. We were meant to more than just survive. So anyway, I launched into doing this training and consulting and a lot of that is leadership and management stuff. Mm -hmm. That's when I discover EOS. And there's this system that helps me on the consulting side, just give some framework to companies. And, you know, I implement with one of the companies and they grow 16% 16, 16 in the first year, 31% in the second year mm. and better. They were a happier, healthier leadership team. And I realized I got it. This is, this is the juice. This is the, the charm. Um, so I met Gina Wickman, drank a little Kool-Aid and here I am. This is all I do now. Nice. That's awesome. And, and what you're saying also reminds me how implementers teach their clients that, you know, the principles of management are like the principles of being a good parent. Yeah. Yeah. You I know, love that you said that. It's what I think of all the time, right? right. Got, that's where we start with all of our clients is, Hey, I'm going to give you principles of being a good parent. Why? Because they apply. Right. Well, when we get to this topic of getting back to management basics, so when we think about that, like, what are you seeing with your clients or out there in the world that's bringing up this issue? Like, what are you seeing in this area? Yeah. People, just humans in general, we lose focus, right? So when we're talking about management and leading and doing it well, I think most of us, or maybe not even most of us, a lot of us that are in leadership positions kind of end up there. We wind up there. We don't know a lot and we get some training or we read some books or we see some people around us that are doing it well. But the truth of the matter is what I see a lot is as humans, we just lose focus and we forget to do the things that we're supposed to do. Or maybe it's a combination of we lose focus and we're lazy inherently. <laughs> I put mm -hmm. myself in that category. I'm not... Uh, throwing insults, but it's sort of like when we parent, you know how it's way easier some days just to sit on the couch and yell at your kid, you know, like, like, just be mad, like, hey, pick that up or don't do that. When what we know we should do is get off the couch, take the time, correct the behavior, discipline the child, bring them back into what's right. Sometimes it's just hard and sometimes life is hard, right? So we kind of get like that. We kind of get like a lazy parent sitting on the couch yelling at our kids instead of doing what's right. So I, I don't know, I see a lot of that. I see we just fall out of good habits. Sometimes we're being lazy. And I would say there's a kind of a third thing that I see mm -hmm. that's at the root of this. And that's, we don't like conflict, right? As humans, mm -hmm. most humans hate conflict. And the basics of being a great leader and manager is holding people accountable. There's that word accountable right. and accountability drives conflict. Yeah. So when, when you're, you know, not created or designed as a human being to really engage in conflict, which the majority of people aren't, we avoid it. And we go to what's easy, which is we don't, we just don't do well in that space. Right. And I would love to, you know, would love to hear if you have any stories or examples in, in this sort of thing happening. Yeah. Uh, too many, <laughs> too many. So um, I will say the other day, here's an, an example of like accountability, right? So one of the things that we teach is, um, okay, so listen, somebody's got to be at the helm of the boat yelling, row, 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 because that's what we're doing, right? If you picture your organization that you're in a boat and you're rowing, I always say you start out with just this visionary is rowing, right? And nobody on the leadership team is even rowing with them because we don't know where we're going. We don't know how we're going to get there. So we kind of go through this process and start to get everybody aligned. And now the whole leadership team is rowing the boat. And now we want to get all the other people in the company to also row with us, right? That's that synergy and that energy that we're looking for. Well, no matter what, somebody has got to be at the helm of the boat yelling, 
row, row, row. And at the same time, that leader has to be like looking out, like, are there any rocks ahead? Are there any icebergs or icebergs or glaciers in there? Like, what are we going to run into? So culturally, a lot of the times a leader that's not doing really great defaults to rowing. So nobody's looking at the helm. Nobody's yelling, row, 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 right? They're doing instead of leading. Mm -hmm. And so what I've seen there's, for example, one of the things I say there is you've got to be open and honest, right? As a leader, if you're going to hold your team accountable, you have to be able to like say to them, hey, Ben, there's a problem that I'm having. Can you help me work through this? Now, maybe the problem I'm seeing is something that you're doing, right, Ben, or that you're not doing. And as leaders, we don't, instead, we just start wrong. Well, I'm going to row for Ben because Ben's not doing the right thing. So I'm in a session recently and one of my fearless leaders, um, great guy, visionary of an organization, looks me dead in the eye, won't look at anybody else at the table. There's, you know, six people around the table and says to me, you know, Kirsten, um, I, the issue is that I have a, I feel like we're not all being open and honest on this team. When we're IDSing and hitting our issues, not everybody's being really open and honest. So I looked at him and I simply said, who? Give me names. Who at this table? Right? So he defaulted to this. I'm just going to say it out in the air and hope the people I'm talking about know that it's them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that default culture, right? Like we default to this is hard. So I'm just going to row for them. And so he was one step better. He was trying not to do their jobs for them, but he wasn't, he wasn't sitting them down like, hey, Ben, I'm really struggling right now because right. I'm not sure you're always open and honest with me. But he, so, didn't never, he never had that conversation about it with the person. He just, they're just supposed to know. Yeah. And he hoped that if he sort of said the words in the air, that somehow it would get solved. You know, sometimes we have to enter that danger. So we did, right? That's what we did. I just said, let's just say who. And he got, he was brave and I applaud him because it's hard. And he dropped the two names in the room and we were able to have an open and honest conversation about it at that point. Hmm. That's leadership. That's management. That's accountability. When I can look at you and say, gee whiz, Ben, this is really hard for me, but let's just go there together so that we both see a win here. Yeah. So a couple of these management basics, right, is being open and honest, yeah. uh, not shying away from conflict or, you know, or accountability, addressing issues, entering the danger. These are habits that we can get out of and do things for people instead of instead of help them elevate into their own role yeah. uh, or address the issues. Um, now, I, I think one of the things that, that you told me in a prior conversation is the role that like accountability chart plays. Yeah, you just said the word accountability and I was like, <clears throat> accountability chart. <laughs> so, you know, some people call it organizational chart, you know, yeah. obviously EOS uh, calls it accountability chart. So wh where does that fit into this? into this issue we're talking. Okay, so I love this question. I'm such a geek. So first of all, you know, you and your audience should be warned. I'm a lot, I have a lot of passion and I love what I do. So I get animated here, bear with me. Awesome. Accountability chart, let's just talk about that for a second. Why do some people call it an organizational chart and some an accountability chart? So for everybody listening and watching right now, I wanna clear that up because it took me a while to kind of sort through, well, it's okay if we call it an accountability chart or an organizational chart, but there's a, there's a key difference in there. Um, I wanna start by saying this, Gino Wickman, Gino, forgive me if I don't capture this exactly right, says the root of all evil lies in the accountability chart. Right. So when I first start as an EOS implementer, you know, when we start with a client, we have like three and a half hours to work on their first accountability chart. And then we have hours later as we keep working on it. And I, and I used to think like, the heck are we going to do for three and a half hours? Like, this isn't that hard until I realized, Ben, it's that hard. This is like taking this big chaotic mess and starting to untangle it. Right. So it's a lot of work. And the root of all evil lies there because it's an accountability chart. What's the difference between an org chart and accountability chart? Accountability chart says, to whom am I accountable and for what am I accountable? It's not about who am I in the organization. It's not about my title in the organization. It's about to whom am I accountable and for what am I accountable? 
So when we talk about how this kind of plays in, I'm going to give you an example of one of my clients and kind of the aha moment. So I've got this client, love them, a realty organization. They've got um, a realty group, about 20 full-time employees and probably about a hundred realtors that work with them. They're super successful, great group, very proactive um, movers and shakers. So in the beginning, once they got the accountability chart, right? we started to iron that out and they got it right. And they figured out, oh, this is the right structure. And these are the right people in those seats. And these are the five roles that the, the seats really need to focus on. Once they rolled that out and they kind of got it right, they worked really hard to then take the next, what, three, six, maybe they even took nine months to start behaving the way their accountability chart should, said they should, right? Mm -hmm. To have all the people in those roles actually doing those things. So they started getting a lot of traction, but best was this one time they walk in the session room, right? And the, the visionary clearly has an issue with the integrator and it hasn't quite shaken its way out. So she just had this open and honest conversation. And you know what she had was, was, Hey, integrator, the five roles on the accountability chart. There's one of them. I don't think that you're hitting a home run on. Right. So all of a sudden we take all those things that you and I just talked about mm -hmm. accountability and having open and honest conversations. And we bring in this accountability chart and we say, hey, we all know how clear this is. You, to whom are you accountable and for what are you accountable? Therefore, I can use that and point at exactly what's on my mind. Right. And we can talk about that really specific thing. So they have this open and honest conversation and two really important things happen. Right. The integrator enlightens the visionary that it's not quite as bad as the visionary thought it was <laughs> mm -hmm. right that tends to be visionaries they're like wow i'm a little worried but also it helped the integrator understand oh the visionary is really worried like this is on her mind like this is weighing her down she's really concerned about this so it helped the integrator to clear the air and lean in and realize i've got to do it better i've got to lean mm -hmm. into doing that thing more and i need to show my visionary that i've got it so right. it was a game changer. It was a huge game changer for them. Right. That's awesome. Right. Because, you know, if you want to be a better leader manager, how can you do that if it's not clear yeah. who's accountable to who and for what? Yeah. And can I tell you one more thing about them? Just because it, I, again, I'm, I'm such a geek. I love this. Same session. No, the next session I walk in and uh, first thing in the morning, the visionary says out of our team of 19 we've lost six people <laughs> and I was like six people in 90 days what went wrong and she said what went right we figured out that at more than half of these people were not GWCing their seats they didn't get it wanted and have the cap capacity how did we know we got clarity in the accountability chart with their five roles we drove scorecard measurables around those five goals and they were consistently not hitting those scorecard measurables. And we took the first like six months and they would, we would listen to them, right? Like, Ben, you're not hitting your numbers. And Ben would be like, I know, but, and you know, this, that, and the other thing. And what she said is we should have believed the truth of our scorecard a long time ago because mm -hmm. our scorecard and our accountability chart were telling us the story and we finally listened. Mm -hmm. So it was actually great turnover for them and set them free. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, that is that is the foundation of everything else. And and when you guys start implementing, you know, entrepreneurial operating system tools with any client, the first thing you do, I mean, you teach you know, some preliminary teachings that you do, but the first work that you do together with them is set up their accountability chart. Right? What's the right structure of this organization? Who's responsible or who's accountable for what? And what exactly does that entail? So, yep. Uh, so so foundational to you know to basic basic leadership and management. You don't know who's responsible for which measurable without it. You don't know who's responsible for what to do's or what jobs are in processes within the organization or what metrics without, without it. So. Yeah, it's crucial. And I love that we start with it because it's like so powerful first thing really early. Yeah. And then it just grows from there, right? It just gets more and more powerful the more they lean into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot more we can talk about with that, but let's talk about blame. For a second here. Let's talk about blame. Let's talk about blame. When 
you know, when you see, let's talk specifically about leaders, you know, whether it's the visionary or the owner or, or other leaders and, you know, with regard to their teams, um, what are you seeing when it comes to leaders and managers blaming others versus, you know, that balance between that and looking at themselves and what the part they play in things. And if you could talk about that for a little bit, Nobody when it comes to management basics. What? We don't have anybody that blames others, do no, we? No, everyone takes responsibility for them. Their Always. own part in things. <laughs> so as you said, when we start working with clients, right, the first day, before we even do accountability chart, we teach this concept of take responsibility. Uh, you made this great company and you also made the mess. So we're never going to blame other people in the room. We're always going to take ownership and just fix what needs to be fixed. Now, notice a subtle difference there. We absolutely hold people accountable, but that's a very different thing from casting blame. So Ben, you and I can be on a leadership team and all day long on, on the leadership team, I can be like, Ben, you know, um, we failed to meet that goal because you and your team didn't execute X, Y, and Z. Let's, let's IDS that. Like what the heck happened there, right? That's accountability. Blame is when I simply say, Ben, you suck this is your problem, right? And we don't figure out what the root cause is and try and uh, dig down. Blame is when I just want to show up and say, it's somebody else's fault. It's never mine. And I see it all the time. I'm glad it's not the thing I see the most, but I will say here, here's my observation of what's at the root of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times owners and managers are not doing it out of a bad motive they're doing it because they're stressed and they're worried. Do you remember that? I just told you about that story with the realty company, right? Like the visionary was looking at the integrator because the visionary really had this on her heart and her mind, right? In her brain and in most visionaries brains, I'm carrying this whole company. Do you care as much as I do? And it's this sort of, I need to know that you care as much as I do. And if I know you care as much as I do, I can breathe a little bit and I can trust you a little bit more. Well, that same thing happens from the integrator to the leadership team and the leadership team to their teams, right? If I know you care about it as much as me, maybe that's 50% of the game right there. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the times we're casting blame because of that stress and that drives us to act in, in fear. Right. We never make good decisions when we're making decisions in fear. And oftentimes that's what we see. So we start casting blames because we're, we're afraid. We're fearful. We're not sure that everybody understands the weight of the world. And a lot of um, leadership teams, integrators, and especially visionaries or owners carry such a heavy load on their shoulders. Right. I'm responsible for making sure it all gets done and everybody gets paid and my cu customers are happy. So that's the, that's the, maybe the sunny side. Can I go to the dark side for a minute? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Cause I have seen it too. I recently had a client, um, which shall remain nameless. Um, so maybe about anonym, seven, anonymify the information. About anonymify. You. Love it. Um, so about 75 people, uh, trades organization in this case, I had a lot of um, grace built in for fear-based behavior because I see it all the time. And trust me when I say in the session room, we get a lot of bad behavior and a lot of it is fear-based. Um, after some time, what I realized is this was just yucky humanity. <laughs> this what, do you was, mean, what do you mean yucky humanity? Yeah, I know it's a technical term, right? <laughs> um, so on the leadership team, there were two siblings. Uh, out of the four people on the leadership team, two were siblings. And what I, I realized in a, in short order, um, and I probably gave them too much time on this to, to let it unfold is that they had a personal culture, a family culture of blame. So it wasn't just fear. It wasn't just bad behaviors because sometimes we all behave badly. It was a culture, um, as humans that they had in their family of it's not my fault. It's never, never my fault. So at one point in time, I said, um, hey, why did you show up without your any of your rocks done again? This was like fourth time in a row. Like, we're not getting our rocks in. I'm talking virtually none. Mm. And so I'm trying to press in to help them become awesome at this LMA, leading and managing, holding people accountable, because that's where the juice is. That's where we reach our goals, right? And I want them to be awesome. And uh, so I'm kind of pressing in and leaning in, and, and they sort of like, crossed arms, 
look, look away and say, I wasn't feeling inspired by my fractional integrator. <laughs> okay. So because you didn't feel inspired, it's not your fault. You know what I mean? Listen, wow. I take a lot of excuses for not getting rocks done because life is hard. And you got like these, your clients, like people listening, for those of you that lead a company, you are rock stars. <laughs> this is hard stuff. And I am wildly empathetic for that as much as I push, right? But if we're going to just cross our arms and say it's his fault and it's her fault and I just didn't feel inspired, that's a blame culture. Mm. That's icky humanity. <laughs> that's that's what we mean icky humanity yeah yeah and some yeah and some sometimes people are you know bitter or vindictive or what you know that's just their mo and right and it, you know it, it, it's not really connected to maybe more forgivable uh you know uh faults <laughs> like you know like uh fear or whatnot uh it's got a slight change in in direction maybe it's related, you know, it's probably partially related, which is that, you know, if I'm a visionary or I'm an integrator or I'm a member of a leadership team, um, maybe, you know, like on the accountability chart, leading, managing, and creating accountability is one of my job descriptions. If I have any yes. direct reports, that's yeah. one of the five bullets on my, on my, what am I accountable for? Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, we're not talking about where people aren't in positions yet or we're hiring, but we already have people. Yeah. And mm -hmm. their leadership and management, the LMA, leadership management accountability piece of their role, we realize they don't GWC, they don't get one or have the capacity to do that well on a consistent basis. Uh, what do we, what do we, you know, what do we advise our clients? Like, what would you tell leaders, you know, listeners and, and viewers when, either I as the visionary or I as the integrator or I as a leadership team member don't, don't get want, you know, I don't really get want and have the capacity to be great at leadership and management as a separate skill set from whatever the substantive skills are of my role in this company. This happens all the time, right? Because we start with an organization and they're just, they're out of control and it's full of chaos. So we bring them in a room and we have a focus day and we talk about responsibility and we talk about great parenting and we build their accountability chart. And for the first time, a lot of them, this is the first time that they've now gotten clarity. They see it on the whiteboard and sort of have this like poof, mind blown epiphany of like, oh, that's how we should feel. That's how we should be structured, right? And then we go to populate it with names and we put people in there. And sometimes it's that day and other times it takes six, nine months, a year. I was just back and forth with a client today that's struggling with exactly that. We've been on the journey for about nine months and she was like, I just don't have the right people in the right seats. They do not LMA. They don't know how to lead, manage and hold people accountable. And listen, sometimes we can train through that. I'm such a fan of training but sometimes you're just not equipped that way. It's not how your wiring works in your brain. And here's what I say about that. Awesome, great. Because if everybody is leading and managing, ain't nobody rowing the boat, right? <laughs> like, so it's actually such a gift when we realize that. So when I have that happen in the session room, um, and sometimes they're right up front, right? They're, they're like, Kirsten, I do, I do not want to manage a soul. I have this one company and that's exactly who they were, a manufacturing company. I had two guys at the first meeting and flat out said, I want no part of this. I am here because they dragged me here. I will give you what you need, but I want no part of this. So I'll tell you two outcomes, two different outcomes. So for that company, I was like, great, you know it, you understand it. Uh, in this case, they asked him to temporarily keep a seat on the leadership team and he agreed to it. So I celebrated it and I was like, somebody's got a row. That's okay, Kenny. Just do your, you know, fill the seat for a period of time. And what happened in time, Ben? He realized he did GWC the seat. He just was resisting. He's a, he's a pressman, right? He's a guy that works on a manufacturing floor. He doesn't belong in a classroom doing book work that we were doing, right? <laughs> So we're a year into the journey and he finally kind of like walks in one day and he's like, Hey, Kirsten, I want this seat. I can lead people. 
And I loved that. It was such a fun epiphany. Wow. So right. that was really great, right? Um, so we have to be careful about people that we think can't LMA lead, manage, and hold people accountable because sometimes we might be able to see things in people that they can't see in themselves. Mm -hmm. Much more often, the opposite is true. So here's how I deal with that. I say, great, now we have a plant. Now you've seen the EOS structure and what we're trying to do here and what we're trying to go and what we're trying to build. So oftentimes they'll stay with me for those first three days. They're the foundational days when we kind of lay down the, the basics that we're going to work with. And then we go into execution mode and that's when they transition off. So they'll stay with me for the first three sessions, give their input, and then they'll go away. They won't be on the leadership team anymore. And I say, that's awesome. Now we have a plant. So when we roll EOS out to the next level down, you're there rallying. You know what we're trying to do. You can be an influence to get everybody else on board. And that's like magic. That's like the secret sauce. That is a mm -hmm. really sweet thing. Um, I will tell you, sometimes it's not that easy. So I'll give you one more story. And it's probably my favorite current story. It's pretty fresh. It happened fairly recently. I got this awesome company up in the Lakes region in New Hampshire, about 25 employees. Um, they're, uh, you know, in a, in a trades organization, they got a bunch of guys in the field doing stuff and the integrator was really a wrong fit. Now the visionary kind of knew it, felt it. And the big deal was what was the problem? This integrator could not then lead, manage and hold people accountable, but what a great guy mm -hmm. and sold out for the organization. He was in both the integrator seat and in the sales leadership team seat. So we go through a whole year and it's becoming more and more painfully obvious, right? Mm -hmm. Rocks aren't done. People aren't held accountable. We're not meeting numbers, all this stuff. So we kind of have this come to Jesus meeting at an annual session. And it really, I just, this organization is rock star. They went to the really hard spot to say, I don't know if this is working. So we had a hard conversation. So here's what happens. I mean, tears, right? I've got, I've got four grown men in the room. There are tears. So we leave the session room. I get on the phone with the visionary and he's like, do I just need to let this guy go? Do I just need to do the hard thing? So we kind of, I give him the, the reflection as a coach through it. Within a week, the integrator calls me up and says, I just want to say, thank you. I am leaving my post as both the integrator and the sales leadership team seat because I am not wired to do that. And for the first time in my life, I'm excited. I'm scared out of my mind. I don't know exactly how I'm going to land, but this company is keeping me on board. I love them. They love me. And I'm just going to trust this and, and step into a different role. So fast forward, we're now six months past that. Mm -hmm. They are breaking records in sales, in production. The guy that's now the integrator was the operations guy, stepped in integrator. He's a rock star made for the role. They brought up a new operations guy. He's a rock star made for the role. Mm. And this integrator, who is thanking me that he just lost his seat in the organization, right. is thriving. He just wasn't built to LMA, but he is a rock star human. He fits their culture and he's making a huge difference in the organization. So that's wow. the success story of what, what can happen if we just go there. All right. That's a, a great story, a great way to conclude as well with, uh, you know, with getting back to management basics, with the accountability chart, with getting into hard conversations, with saying it out loud, yeah. with, with recognizing that people need to, uh, you know, that, that people need to, just, you know, enter the danger and have those hard conversations about the whatever the numbers are that they're accountable for or the parts of their job. Uh, you know, it's a, you know, it's a shame you want the visionary or the business owner to have that conversation, not to wait till the session and have you kind of pull it out like you're pulling teeth, you know, but like yeah. to, you know, to use their regular opportunities to say, Hey, this is on my mind. You yeah. know, what, what, what's, you know, what should we do here? And usually we get there, right? That's, that's kind of the point. And, and, you know, here's what I'd say to your listeners, right? Like it's a process. Nobody's perfect. Just keep chipping away, keep working at it, keep practicing, um, you know, read books on candor, radical candor and accountability. But the bottom line is just learn and grow. Usually by the time my clients graduate, they got it. 
they're doing it every now and again maybe we take a step backwards but generally speaking we learn it we do it and man is there relief when we do awesome well it's a great topic i i appreciate you you're bringing us back to basics because i feel like sometimes we get into these highfalutin the newest business book or the newest leadership concept or the patrick lencioni ted talk or something and you know forget to do the basics so this is really and, and pat lencioni is great yes yes i love it i love it but sometimes if we only do the advanced stuff and not the basics then we're you know we're really uh you know fooling ourselves yeah absolutely and i will say this too about the work that you and your team do um, some of the greatest successes I've seen with my companies are when they bring in a fractional integrator to coach up somebody that's not doing it well and decide, mm. does this person have the skills? And I will say that situation that I just told you about, that was sort of part of the charm is they brought in a fractional integrator mm -hmm. to come alongside and give him every opportunity to figure out if he was really fit for that mm -hmm. seat, if he could GWC the seat. So that's sort of that magic as fractional integrators. What you do is you can come in and help people see what it should look like. Right. That's sweet. That's a sweet spot. So I appreciate you and your team. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate the plug on the Wolf Said Integrators team. Reach out to us. Um, anyway, thank you, Kirsten. And I appreciate you and uh, look forward to seeing you around soon. People can reach out to you through LinkedIn. You'll be linked on this. Uh, you know, people can reach out to you. And thank you for sharing. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And everybody else, we'll see you on the other side. Thank you. You're listening to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community with your host, Ben Wolf.